Blueberry Wednesday. It's been a little while, sorry, it's been caught up with um, life, work, study, stuff like that. Anyhow, um, what's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. Um, I am brewing right now, it's Wednesday afternoon, I'm brewing a low gravity beer. Yeah, it's one of my first low gravity beer. It's about a 2.8% beer. And I've just taken it from a recipe that I found on the net um, called Tiny the Elder. So, a bit of a play on, on the, the classic. Um, so anyhow, it's in here, over here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've learned about low gravity beers. So, there it is, it's in the mash tun at the moment. But what I've done is, um, my little bit of research into this is that um, I've used a very high percentage of Munich malt. Apparently it ha helps add body to it. So in this case here I've got one and a half kilos of Munich malt, I've got a kilo of Gladfield's malt, and uh, a couple of hundred grams of um, crystal malts. Uh, just a medium body one, obviously to give it a bit of body and texture. So one of the problems of brewing low alcohol beers is the mouthfeel and the body that you so desperately want. And that's of course to help, um, I'm using, I'm making a sort of a hoppy type beer. Um, and the challenge with that is how do I um, let the hop shine through? Because normally, you know, in a hoppy hoppy beer, that you pull the malt profile back a bit and let the hop shine through. Um, but I just don't want it to taste like um, hop cordial, you know, if, if, if I don't get the, hop, the balance there. So anyhow, so, um, and in this, I've got some um, Cascade hops. The original recipe had Galaxy, but I'm using Mosaic just because it's some really lovely, fresh, beautiful Mosaic hops here, and um, and some Whitey um, hops as well. They're very low alpha acid hops. So um, yeah, anyhow. So uh, what's happening? So it's mashing right now at 71 degrees, a little bit higher in temperature, just so that we get that um, the mouth feel because all the sugars. Um, you'll get the longer sugar chains um, and therefore you'll have a little bit more residual but uh, hopefully we're going to end up with a nice sort of a nice mouthfeel. I'm sort of doing this because um, you know in New Zealand if you're not aware of this the overseas um, viewers of this channel is that um, we've had a, a change in our driving laws and um, you know you probably realistically you could actually have not scientific here but you probably have about six beers and you'll be fine and that's probably I saw a study and it was um, quite a it wasn't a scientific study, but it was, it was done on a TV show here, and there was quite a slim lady, and she had five Heinekens before she blew the bag. Um, but now, um, our, our driving limits have uh, reduced, um, so a lot more people are looking for lower alcohol beers, and, um, and I'm brewing one, and I'm brewing one also because uh, I've got a mate of mine, he, he's keen on trying one. Um, so it's just, it's just a challenge, you know, it's a challenge. So this is just a 15 litre recipe that I've got over here. So, um, yeah, so anyhow, interesting stuff, you know, I don't know anything about the, the, um, about these types of beers, um, I'm, instead of putting bittering hops in, for, you know, for the initial bittering boil, I'm putting in some hops in with the, with the mash, it's just um, 8 grams of Cascade, and then I'm going to do a 10 minute addition, and with that we're going to have um, about 10 grams of Mosaic um, Cascade and Waitee. And then again, roughly about 10 grams at five of each of those again, and then 10 grams each for dry hopping. So pretty, um, pretty, pretty. Um, you know, for me, that's only about 90 grams in hops in total. Which, you know, yeah, I'd probably put a few more in. Oh, it's actually 100 grams or up. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd you know, be easily 200 grams in most of my most of my beers. But anyhow, and the other cool thing that I've been doing for my little bit of research is that everyone recommends is using um, USO4 hops. Or an, or an English yeast just to allow more of that fruit flavour to come through. Um, so, hey, who knows? Great thing is that apparently these beers have got a reasonably quick turnaround. So, um, the, obviously, these, they don't take as long to condition, apparently. Don't know. We'll give it a go. But anyhow, that's what's happening here at the moment. And it's drizzling outside, which is freaking amazing. Oopsie. No, I can't do that. Wrong way. And that's amazing because we're almost in drought-like conditions here in, in, in New Zealand, um, especially Central Otago. I'm, I'm on the coast there, but it's pretty dry up there. So this, this little drizzle is a welcome retreat from the crazy weather we've been having. Anyhow, I'll get back to you shortly. Yeah, sorry I've been on a little while.
for getting on the on the YouTube. I'll just um, sparge it out and not that it's very glamorous, but yeah, it's in there mashing away. It's in there, not mashing away, boiling away now. Anyhow, what else has happened? Oh, I got my conical fermenter for Christmas. Let's have a look at that for a minute because um, for those who are interested in buying one, quite quite an interesting sort of product. So actually. here it is. This is one of the um, SS brands that you see. Um, and I put a blow off, blow off valve on that one just because it um, um, had quite a lot of um, wart in there. But um, I think uh, that for the money, these are fantastic value. Um, I've managed to get my temperature probe just in there with my bung as well. That's working quite well. Um, and they're really sort of high, you know, good quality. Really good quality. And a wee valve down the bottom. That's awesome. So what I'm planning to do is have um, fully enclosed CO2 environment. So I'll push some CO2 through the top, up through over there, and then um, down here. And so um, because of the conical bum on them, all that trub and stuff is down there. And it's got a, um, a mobile racking up. I'll see if I can get that. If you can see it, you can go like, so like that, you can go like that, and that moves it so that you can get all the beer out of it without um, disturbing the trub too much on the bottom, which is pretty cool. So if we compare that to my other stainless one, one um, and it's got, I don't know, not a particularly efficient tap, not very useful, not much purpose really. Um, yeah. I can't really compare the two to be honest with you. Yeah, so I'm going to keep it a wee bit short and, sh short and sweet this week. Um, I'll let you know how this beer turns out. Um, we'll take a gravity reading on it. So I'm aiming for about 1,030. Pretty low. Um, and hoping... got mash. Mash was at 71, so it's stuck there all the way, so it's pretty good. Um, and it reckons, I'm just using Bearsmith, and it reckons, that's awesome, although Bearsmith just got into it, um, it reckons that's going to come out around about uh, 2.9, 2.9 something. So, who knows? Pretty cool if it works, hey? Anyhow, you have a happy home Wednesday, and I'll catch you next week. See ya, bye.